What's up guys? Welcome to my garage. Um, first of all, I want to say some words in Portuguese. I hope you guys don't get upset, but I do have quite a few people asking me um, a couple things and I want to mention them in Portuguese first. Okay? So, pro pessoal aí em Portugal que já me perguntou o porquê de eu estar a gravar os vídeos em inglês, é muito simples. O inglês é uma língua universal, como todos vocês sabem, e a Yama DT não foi só apenas comercializada em Portugal, foi comercializada em muitos outros países do mundo inteiro, incluindo a América, que é onde eu estou a viver neste momento, a América do Sul, a Israel, Japão, tem muitos sítios onde a moto foi vendida também. Daí eu de estar a fazer os vídeos em inglês, porque o inglês sendo uma língua universal fica, torna as coisas um pouco mais simples. Mas, se vocês acham que existe alguma coisa que vocês não estão a entender, que vocês queiram que eu faça o vídeo somente em português, eu posso fazer também. Okay? Eu posso fazer vídeos dedicados apenas só em português, um, ou talvez pôr legendas em algum vídeo que vocês tenham algumas dúvidas daqui, daqui em diante. Okay? De qualquer das maneiras, fico muito agradecido por vocês estarem a, a, a seguir o canal e acompanharem o meu projeto, que no fundo é, aqui na América não existe esta moto assim como em Portugal, ela só foi vendida em 2, 3 anos e, aliás, eles nem têm a versão de disco aqui e a minha ideia é criar uma moto que eu possa usar se eu quiser ir para o trabalho, ir para o trabalho ou se eu quiser praticar um, super motard no cartódromo, eu também posso praticar e, enfim, uh, divertir-me com a máquina, digamos assim. So, sorry about that, guys, for the ones who only speak uh, another language besides Portuguese, but I had to do this. So, here we go. Um, my first cylinder is ready on a sense of the intake. The intake port is completely done, finally. Um, now I can install the reed cage that I'm going to use for this specific engine. Not a problem, just waiting on a spacer. Some of the parts are coming from Portugal. Um, I have everything already like ordered and this should be on the way already. So I should have them pretty soon. Um, I welded this in aluminum and I finished uh, some imperfections with um, a very strong epoxy for aluminum. Um, now, I'm getting to a point that I'm also waiting for the tool, the 90 degree angle tool, to port the, 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 intake, the inside of the cylinder and port the intake, C port and all of that good stuff. It's gonna take me a while uh, until I receive that. I think it's only come on the end of this month, if I'm not mistaken. So until then, I'm not gonna be able to do exactly what I wanna do. But one thing that I can do is start measuring the degrees that I have on the cylinder for this specific setup and hopefully I can get it the result that I want for this particular engine. Again, I'm going to do two different engines. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm going to do an engine where it's going to be more torque, more response at the throttle. It might not do uh, insane top end speed. And another engine, it's more focused, like if it was like a road racing engine, okay? So, first thing, uh, and this is a, a big misconception for a lot of people. A lot of people tend to, to grab one of these and come on the cylinder and go on the port. Oh, I have 23 millimeters from the top. I'm going to use that on my engine. Okay, let me tell you something, guys. If you change your rod length, meaning between centers, if you change your stroke, this is going to change and there is a good chance you ruin your engine. Okay? So you always need to measure the engine in degrees. Um, if you say that the, the, the exhaust port have like 20 mil 
23 millimeters from the top yeah it might work right for your setup but it's not going to work right on a 125 or a 250 engine with totally different uh, stroke and rod length now if you say that your intake have 130 degrees that well might be awesome for across the board okay depending on what you're doing so I'm going to change the camera position in a second and I'm going to show you guys how I measure it. So pretty much what I have here is just half of the crank. This is just for demonstration purposes. I have my <laughs> my tester over here. I don't even know how to call him. And I put a, a, a degree, degree wheel on it. So I'm just going to slide the cylinder in here. I have this nut in the washer. Pretty much it's going to do the height that I'm going to use on my spacer. So with you guys, I recommend you guys to use a complete assemble engine. Best way to do it. Make sure you put everything the way it's supposed to be installed. Now let me find over here somewhere. I had it somewhere. There it is. I have my... And you need to find a way to put something like a washer and then one of your nuts bolts whatever the case may be so you need to make sure that you have this torqued properly like if you had the engine installed okay this is enough now oh, I need this again I'm going to use the piece of a metal wire this is going to be my pointer I need to put these threads I know it's not that while I was welding I think I got something in there <clears throat> and yes I'm not a great welder it's something that I need to practice okay I should have something like this it's enough Okay, I have my pointer installed. Now um, I'm going to move the camera a little bit more and I'm going to show you guys from another angle usually how I do this and that way you guys can me always measure your your degrees and figure out exactly what's going on on your engine. Okay, So the way we're going to do this is I already went ahead, sorry I, I didn't record this part and I put it the piston from top that center I start rotating coming all the way down and the window we're going to measure it is going to be the C port for the intake okay so when the top of the piston starts to uncovering that port I stop right there I grab a caliper take the measurement okay and I set my degree wheel at zero it doesn't matter which one because the only thing you need to do is just to count the, de the degrees I like to put it like that it, ma it makes our life easier now what we need to do is we're gonna rotate the crankshaft all the way down till it starts coming back up again and then you're gonna stop and to ensure you stop on the exact same point where you started, you use the caliper, you rotate, you put the piston against the bottom of the caliper, you're done. Now the only thing you need to do is count the degrees. Okay, so this is the way uh, that I find the easiest to make sure that we have uh, a good measurement for the degrees that are being used. And this is a procedure that you always should be doing. Checking your degrees all the time. Do not just come in here and measure the height of the port. Man, if you're changing rods, if you're changing stroke, you're gonna you're gonna have issues if you don't do that.
so we measured our degrees um, now you guys have idea how you guys can measure your degrees and try to have your stuff set up correctly now I just want to talk about it uh, this specific build so I'm really going to use a 45 millimeter stroke that stroke right there it's a 45.7 I'm gonna use a 45 just because it's more uh, convenient for me it's easier for me to get the parts I'm having some t hard time to get those specific crankshafts so with that being said I already have crankshaft on the way 45 I do gonna use this piston for this engine it's a 54 obviously and this is the rod that I'm gonna use now this rod have uh, 94 between uh, centers and this rod they don't make it anymore this is a, a rod from a very old uh, go-kart engine there is quite a few rods out there they look like but they are not the same they are 100 millimeter um, yes making uh, installing a, a longer rod is very beneficial it's something that I'm going to talk about it later on but I already made my mind this is exactly the setup that I'm going to use at least for this engine for the next one it might be exactly the same since I have the same rod I have actually quite a few of those um, not sure about the piston but and the reed cage the reed cage for sure next engine i'm not going to use that reed cage uh, just because if i'm trying to make um, an engine that um, is going to do it's more sim more towards like a road racing style i think i need to use a different style of reed valves but it's something that i can test and uh, the good thing is i can run the bike on a dyno because i have a dyno at work so that's going to be interesting to see so that's it for today. I hope you guys like it.